Reggae Just Extra with Ross Dennis. April 19, 1966 saw incredible scenes unfold in Jamaica, the likes of which have never been repeated. At Norman Manley International Airport, which was formerly known as Palisados Airport, thousands gathered, the majority of them adherents of the Rastafari faith, waiting to see His Imperial Majesty. And along the main route that leads from the airport into Kingston, thousands more lined the roadside, some with flags at the ready, hoping to catch a glimpse of King of Kings in the flesh. The heavy rainfall was no deterrent, especially to the Rastafarians that brought their drums, banners, and assorted regalia. Just as the sun broke through the clouds, the imperial jet came into view, bearing the Ethiopian colors and a roaring lion on its flank. The crowd erupted. The day of deliverance had finally come. My name is Ras Dennis, and you are welcome to another video by Reggae Just Extra. In this episode, we will take a closer look at what happened on the day Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie, the first, visited Jamaica, and the role of Brother Mortimer Plano during the said visit. Kindly remember to subscribe to this channel, like and hit the notification bell to be the first to watch our next video. You're now watching Reggae Just Extras His Imperial Majesty's Visit to Jamaica's Edition. The visit of Haile Selassie to Jamaica had a dramatic effect on the Rastafari movement, since he is seen as an incarnation of God, was fated by politicians, and given the keys to the capital city, the faith was awarded its first inkling of official recognition, giving credence to the beliefs of Jamaica's most ostracized citizenry. A mere three years after the Coral Gardens massacre, in which dozens of Rastas were killed by security forces, the incredible welcome accorded Selassie strengthened the determination of the faithful and helped swell the movement's ranks. The transformation was acutely evidenced in the island's music scene. If not for Selassie's visit, the spread of Rastafari through reggae probably never would have taken place. that oppression make the wise man mad and who is madder than my servant said the lord our god rastafari Rast first emerged in jamaica after selassie's 1930 coronation three years after marcus garvey had proclaimed look to africa for the crowning of a black king he shall be the redeemer and as new religious leaders like Leonard Howell and Holy Emmanuel Edwards began to galvanize support by proclaiming that God was black and that the rightful place for black Jamaicans was Africa, sectors of the peasantry responded enthusiastically. Across the island, various forms of Rastafari took root, all based around the concept that Selassie was a living black Christ. But Rastas endured terrible persecution. In Eurocentric Jamaica, most were derided as madmen, or shunned as blackheart men, devil worshippers that ate the hearts of children. They faced very real maltreatment, especially from the police. When the imperial plane landed and Selassie appeared at the door, there was sheer pandemonium as hordes of Rastafari stormed the plane. After failing to calm the crowd, His Majesty retreated back into the aircraft until Rasta leader Mortimer Plano, who was a founding member of the Rastafari Movement Association, which held the Ethiopian World Federation Charter 37, and was the driving force behind the first universal groundation, a symbol of Rastafari in Bako Wall, now Tivoli Gardens, he was the person who finally achieved calm, allowing His Majesty to disembark. As Lee Scratch Perry once explained to journalist Jean-Francois Bizet, 12,000 Rastas were waiting for him at the airport. 
The prophecy said that one morning the sole white dove would fly over the assembled Rastas, followed by a short shower of benediction. His plane came from the east, coming out of the dawn, and it rained when the plane landed. The chalices were being passed around and people were smoking the herb with our flags, our rockets, our spliffs, and our music, and above all the abing, the horn that was the rallying instrument of the maroons in the bush two centuries ago. That experience is something I will never forget, says promoter and Peter Tosh's former manager, Copeland Forbes, who was chosen to be Celesi's official car door opener. I don't know if you want to call it a miracle, but it was raining heavy, and when the plane popped over the clouds, the sun came out. When the plane touched down on the runway, the pilot pulled the window, open, and put out an Ethiopian flag, and the plane was surrounded by hundreds. I saw people leaning up by the plane wheel, smoking a chalice, and drum beating, so the official welcome party had to be abandoned. Perhaps the real miracle was that no one was injured, given all the smoking near highly explosive aircraft fuel. Bob Marley was off the island that day, but fellow Whalers band members Peter Tosh, Bunny Whaler, Rita Marley, and Constantine Vision Walker were there and actually saw His Majesty driving to the city standing on his car. You're now watching Reggae Gist Extras His Imperial Majesty's Visit to Jamaica's Edition. Bob Marley and other members of the group already knew Plano quite well. The Rastafarian elder lived in the same neighborhood as the vocal group on 35, 5th Street in West Kingston's Trenchtown Ghetto, where he kept a library of books on black power and Ethiopian history. Plano grew closer to the Whalers throughout 1965. Upon his return from Delaware in late 1966, Marley began an association with him that would last for a couple of years, eventually leading Plano to becoming Marley's manager and producer for a few months. On June 8, 1968, Bob Marley recorded his first openly Rastafarian song, Celesi is the Chapel, backed by Rastafarian Nyabingi Ritual Drum Ensemble Ras Michael and the Sons of Negus, with Rita Marley and Peter Tosh on harmony vocals. The recording session at JBC Studio was financed by Plano. He also recorded a Rasta prayer himself, using some Amharic words as well as quoting the Bible. He was also backed by Ras Michael's group, and this recording was issued on the B-side of this rare record as A Little Prayer. These two rare, vintage tracks were briefly reissued in 2003 by reggae historian Bruno Blum on the Bob Marley 4CD set Rebel, J.A.D. Records. Plano was later involved in the One Love Peace concert, an event headlined by Marley in 1978. Celesi's visit highlighted the intensive polarization of Jamaican society. At the airport, Rastafarians chanted and danced, shouting Hail the Man, Lamb of God, and Black Man Time Now. Commissioner Eustace Bird was heavily booed during a ceremony in which Celes was given a key to the city. The massive crowd at Spanish Town, the first stop of Celesi's official railway journey across the island, drew hostile police action, resulting in several injuries. But if Rastas were viewed with contempt by the ruling class, Celesi's visit accorded them space. Rasta leaders were given gold medals by Celesi, and Count Ossie's drummers gave an impassioned performance before the Emperor. Celesi's visit naturally had a profound effect on the island's musicians, not least Rita Marley, who glimpsed Stigmata on Celesi's palm when his motorcade passed her in the street. She wrote to her husband, Bob Marley, who was then in Delaware, explaining her conversion to the faith, and when Bob Marley returned to Jamaica, he joined Rita and his fellow whalers by embracing its doctrine. In time, Rastafari would be their music's focus, leading to awareness overseas. Until this point, expressions of the Rastafari worldview were more undercover than upfront. Count Ossie's drummers made O Carolina a landmark pre tune, but the song was a mere romance ballad in R&B mode. Noel Zoot Sims transformed the hymn Golden Pen into a jumping ska, introducing it in press along in Amharic, but both were somewhat coded, their meaning unclear to casual listeners, and Scatolite's instrumentals like Beardman ska only alluded to the faith. Tasha's track was direct, heralding a new direction that would blossom once the reggae form took hold. By the end of the decade, 
the Rigay boys were declaring that Celestia go burn them with fire. Uroi saluted the righteous ruler. The Abyssinians gave praise with Sada Amasagana and Burning Spear proclaimed Zion higher. Once Bob Marley began singing Celestia is the chapel and satisfy my soul Ja Ja, the world took note. In the entire recorded history of Jamaica, no other outside visitor has attracted as much interest as Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie, the first not even Queen Elizabeth II, who had visited the month before. It thus remains a watershed moment in the island's history, especially for the Rastafari movement and its attendant reggae scene. Thanks for watching and do remember to subscribe, give it a like and post a positive comment in the comment section below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis.